Hello everybody, Jennifer Baker here. It's a beautiful day to learn how to color engraving. I've done several engraving projects over the years and I love how they turn out. So I thought, why not add some color to make them even more beautiful? But there are so many choices when it comes to adding colors, as it turns out. Uh, there's lots of different paints and inks that we can use. There's Rub and Buff, which is one of my favorites, as you know, but which one works the best? That's the question. Well, you know, I love to experiment when it comes to crafting, so that's exactly what I did. And today I'm gonna to share my findings with you so you can use them too. So let's head on over to the craft table and we'll get started. When it comes to crafting, I really like to test things out. Today I'm testing different ways to add color to acrylic and metal plaques. I engraved my designs with both a Cricut cutting machine and a Glowforge laser cutter. And then I tested all different kinds of ways to add color. Just look at all the choices that we have here. Some of these really made the projects pop while others were a big old flop. But before I share my favorites, let's take a look at everything I used for this project. Now, like I mentioned, I engraved my designs on both metal and acrylic. To make sure the color would hold on the Cricut engravings, I added hatch fills with a Cricut engraving tool. I will explain more about that in just a bit. You'll also need a purple strong grip machine mat for this project if you're doing the Cricut version. And then I tested out all these different types of color options. We've got enamel paint, acrylic ink, rub and buff. I also used uh, metallic wax, paint pens, even some dry erase markers. I used paint brushes, painter's tape, and some soft cloths to add the colors, along with these other materials and supplies to help with cleanup. Before we get started, I did want to mention that due to the hatch fill and the size of the finished designs, each of the files will take a little over an hour to engrave on the crickets. So make sure that you're prepared by ensuring you have a good internet connection and that you turn off any auto sleep or screensaver functions on your computer because these functions will stop the engraving process and then you'll need to start all over again, which is a big bummer. It's also a good idea to connect your machine directly to your computer with you USB rather than use a Bluetooth connection. If you're using a Glowforge to engrave acrylic or anodized aluminum, it's just about 30 minutes for these designs. So it still takes a while. So either way, be prepared to spend some time engraving. So let me show you where to find our free practice designs and then we will engrave and color them in together. Step one, get my free engraving files. Go to jennifermaker.com slash 453 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching for number 453 and then click it to download a zip file. You can trace the PDFs or use the DXF or SVGs with a cutting machine. I'll show you how to use the SVGs with a Cricut cutting machine, then add the color by hand. I have three different designs for you to choose from. Home Sweet Home, All You Need Is Love and Coffee, and Love Grows Here. Upload the one you want to Cricut Design Space and add it to your canvas. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to unzip and upload files. I'll show you how to prepare the coffee design, my favorite. You can use the same steps to create the whole collection or color in the engraving on something entirely different. Step two, prepare your engraving design. Here's how the design looks on my canvas. If you zoom in really close, it looks like there is a tiny diamond pattern inside parts of the design and letters. Sort of like an argyle design without the extra lines. We're going to transform those into something really important in just a moment. If you zoom back out, you'll also see there's a rectangle around the design. That will help us position everything on the map for the best result. It will engrave a light line on your machine mat, but it won't hurt. If you'd prefer, you can delete this layer and just take more time to align the design. I'm going to keep it. If you're using the same acrylic blanks as I am, it's almost ready to go. My design is 6 by 8 inches, which fits nicely on the 5 by 7 inch blank. 
with the design selected, click Operation and select Engrave. Here's that transformation I just mentioned. If you zoom back in on the design, you'll see that the diamond pattern changed into lots of crisscrossed diagonal lines. This is called hatch fill, and the Cricut will engrave along the lines to make sure the whole design stands out, not just engrave the outline, so those parts will look filled in. The overlapping lines will be easy to add color to. If you'd like to learn more about Hatch Fill, check out my tutorial called How to Put Handwriting into a Cricut Project over on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash handwriting to Cricut Projects. I walk you through the process step by step. Next, click Attach at the bottom of the Layers panel, and that's all on the canvas. Make sure you have the right machine selected and click Make It. On the Prepare screen, center the image on the mat. Just click and hold your mouse and use the rectangle outline to help align it with the grid. You want two squares or inches above and below the outline and three squares or inches to either side. The outline is a bit larger than the blank, so don't worry, the edges won't get engraved. Then click continue. On the make screen, we'll select our material. You will notice that most, if not all, of the favorites are grayed out. That's because none of them are compatible with engraving. For the metal plaque, click Browse All Materials and search for Aluminum. You specifically want anodized aluminum. For the others, search for Acrylic and select Thick Acrylic 2mm. Then click Done. Either way, change the pressure to more to get a deeper engraving, which is better for coloring. You will see the engrave tool listed under tools with instructions to place it in clamp B. I'm using an acrylic blank for the coffee design, but the steps are mostly the same for the metal. Make sure your plaque is no more than two millimeters or one sixteenth of an inch thick, or it might not fit under your cutting machine's rollers. Next, use the weeding tool or your fingers to take off the plastic covering on one side of the acrylic plaque. Then to make sure your acrylic plaque is ready for engraving, put it on a purple strong grip machine mat and get painter's tape to stick around the edges of the acrylic plaque to ensure the plaque is secured well to the mat. Put your engraving tool in clamp B and move the star wheels all the way to the right. Load your prepared mat and hit the flashing button to begin the engraving. Now these big designs can take over an hour to engrave. Remember, don't let your computer go to sleep during the engraving process. You'll want to check in often in case any issues arise. If you look back at your design space screen when the engraving begins, you will see this pop up. Don't worry, that's supposed to be there. It's just letting you know that when the engrave tool lifts and spins, that it is doing what it's supposed to do. When it's done, unload the machine mat and admire your work. Isn't that just so cool? Now use a soft cloth to brush off the debris and the machine tool. To remove the plaque from the mat, first peel off the tape. Remove the acrylic plaque from the machine mat. Take off the back protective film if it's there and then brush off any more debris. You'll also want to clean the engraving tool after each design. Here's what all three designs look like. They really are so pretty just like this, but let's make them even more spectacular. Step three, color your engraved design. Now for the fun part, the coloring. I'll show you the methods one by one. Keep your work surface covered with butcher paper and wear some gloves to keep your hands clean. Rub and buff works the same way on acrylic and metal. You'll need a dry cloth that you can get messy, rubbing alcohol and painter's tape. I'll use ebony, which is black, and gold leaf. Let's start with the black. Use the tape to cover any areas you want to make gold. Squeeze the open tube and apply a tiny amount of rub and buff onto a spot that will be black. A little goes a long way. Small areas work best like a letter or two. Buff it into the engraved areas with the cloth. Paper towels get torn up by the engraving lines. It's really not fun. Ask me how I know. <laughs> when you finish a section, wipe the excess off the plain surface. 
The wax dries quickly, so you may need to dampen the cloth with water or rubbing alcohol to help. Keep going through the small sections until the first color is done. If any spots should be darker, add another layer before moving on. Now for the gold. Remove the tape and clean off any wax that snuck underneath. Let the black dry for a few minutes, then put tape on the finished area so they don't mix. Apply the gold rub and buff to the rest of your design. Remember, just a few letters at a time. Now remove the tape, wipe off any remaining rub and buff from the plain surface, and let it dry. Here's how my finished gold and black plaque looks. Isn't it just so pretty? Rub and buff is permanent, so you don't need to seal it. I also tried this on a piece of acrylic that I engraved on my Glowforge laser cutter. And here's how they look side by side. The Cricut engraved plaque is on the left, and the Glowforge engraved plaque is on the right. Now let's try enamel paints. I'll use the red, green, and black paints on my home sweet home engraved acrylic plaque. The process works on metal too. You'll need the same supplies as the rub and buff, plus a paintbrush for each color and the paint thinner that comes in the kit I linked. Open a window to help with the paint's odor. Again, cover the engraved areas that won't be the first color with the tape. Shake your first paint bottle to mix it well. I'll start with green. Open the paint and make sure it isn't separated. Mixing with the brush can help a lot. Apply a dab of paint to a small section of your design. Don't worry about painting within the lines because we'll wipe away any excess with our cloth. If the paint starts to dry or is hard to remove, dampening your cloth with rubbing alcohol will help. Don't get too much alcohol into the engraved areas though. It can lighten the color if it's still wet. Plain water won't work on these paints. You can go back to add a second coat if anything is too light. When the first color is done, take off the tape and remove any paint underneath. Let it all dry for a few minutes, then cover the colored areas as well as any clear spots that you're saving for the third color. Set your used paintbrush aside and grab the next one for the red paint. Add the next color using the same steps one at a time. Let it dry, remove the tape, remember to protect the already colored areas, and then add the black. Here's the finished plaque. The enamel paints are permanent once they dry overnight, so you don't need a sealer. I also tried this on a piece of acrylic that I engraved on my Glowforge. And here's how they look side by side. The Cricut engraved plaque is on the left, and the Glowforge engraved plaque is on the right. Cleanup is very important with enamel paints. Water doesn't work, you need to use paint thinner. Just pour a bit into a disposable cup and swish the brush until it's clean. Now let's try the acrylic inks. If you want to blend colors for a watercolor effect, these are the way to go. I'll use the red, blue, and yellow inks to make a rainbow look on an aluminum plaque with my Love Grows Here engraving. The process works on acrylic too. You'll need the same basic supplies, plus a paintbrush for each color, a cup of water, and paper towels. The alcohol inks aren't permanent, so we'll seal them with a clear lacquer spray. To blend colors, you'll need the two ink colors before moving anything around. I'll have red on the left, yellow in the middle, and blue on the right. I'll blend to make some orange and green in the right spots. Starting with the lightest color is a good idea. Shake the yellow bottle well, open it, and use the dropper to add a few dots in the middle engraved areas. The ink spreads easily, so add just a few drops to start. You can always add more ink later to make it darker or more vibrant. And now a few drops of red on the left with some blank space in between. Grab a brush for your yellow and spread it to cover the areas you want to be just yellow. Don't get it too close to the red yet, but spread the ink so it covers every nook and cranny of the engraved areas. Don't worry about staying inside the lines because you can easily wipe off the excess later. Isn't this fun? To make orange, carefully spread some of the yellow ink into the areas right next to the drop of red. 
The ink colors will naturally want to mix together when they touch. If you want a lighter orange, add another drop or two of yellow. For a darker, add a drop or two of red. Once all the yellow, orange, and red areas are covered, use a paper towel to gently blot up any pools of excess ink, starting with the yellow. Then move on to the orange and finally the red. If you pick up a lot of ink, use a clean paper towel to avoid really changing the next color. After I finished the left half of my rainbow, I started with a fresh brush for the other side. First, add a few more drops of yellow to the center and then blue to the right. Spread and blend the inks like you did on the left half of your design. Feel free to add a few more drops of one color or another to get just the right shades. Once you're happy with your colors, use a paper towel to blot up any excess pools of ink and let the plaque sit for 5 to 10 minutes. Letting them dry a bit helps the ink stick in the engraving. Use a damp cloth to wipe the smooth surfaces and remove ink around the designs. Don't buff the design, but you can gently wipe over the engraved areas if there's a lot of ink. Press harder in the smooth areas to remove the ink. If you use too much pressure and remove some of the ink from an engraved area, you can just add more ink, let it sit, and then wipe away the excess again. It's very forgiving. Once everything looks good, let it sit for 24 hours to dry. And just like before, I also tried this on a piece of acrylic that I engraved on my Glowforge. And here's how they look side by side. The Cricut engraved plaque is on the left and the Glowforge engraved plaque is on the right. I just love all the color possibilities there are with these paints and these inks. Now the fun thing about adding color to these engravings uh, with this technique is that every plaque will look a little bit different as you can see, making each one its own unique work of art. It's really cool. Some of the other coloring methods that I tested were dry erase markers, metallic oil-based paint pens, and India ink. The dry erase markers and India ink were very easy to wipe away, so not as permanent as I would have liked. The paint pens, on the other hand, were more permanent, but harder to use because the excess was very difficult to wipe away. So I picked my three favorites because they were the easiest to use, lasted the longest, and came in a wide range of colors. Uh, so please let me know if you experiment with any other coloring methods and find any that you like. Now, during my test, I found that plain anodized aluminum plaques worked better with my coloring methods than ones with shiny or painted coatings. You can, of course, experiment with different types of metal to see what works best for you. Now, you can display your finished plaque on a table, shelf, or counter, perhaps right next to your coffee maker. That would be really cool if you make the love and coffee design. And you can use stands like these wooden ones that I have. They came with the acrylic plaques in my materials list. You can also use some adhesive or mounting strips to hang your plaque on a wall or a door. Get creative and have fun. Now, if you have any questions about how to color engraved designs made either with a Cricut or a Glowforge, let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I hope this helps you color lots and lots of fun designs. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.